Everybody knows that maths is exploding. The rate at which new papers emerge is getting faster and faster. And as a consequence, the last human that was widely acknowledged to know all of maths, David Hilbert, was doing research over a hundred years ago. The idea of discovering new maths completely lights me up. But then the pessimist in me wants to know just how hard is it? And exactly what makes it so hard? Because as a current student looking in from the outside, it feels like I'm years of dedicated reading away from even being in a position to find out if I've got what it takes to make a contribution. It really makes you think that will degrees have to get longer to match the rate of expansion of the body of knowledge? And something that caught my eye is why are there some mathematicians that are questioning the validity of some of these modern papers, suggesting they're incomplete or even incorrect? Well, we'll answer these questions as I investigate just how hard is it to discover new maths. But first, I've always been curious as to what would happen if I, as an undergraduate, tried my hand at reading a full research paper. If I can choose one with not that many prerequisites, then it can't be that hard, right? Well, I found a fairly recent one by Tao which shows that a question proposed by Erdos must be false. And if you're familiar with the contents of a first probability course, and you also know what a field is, then you can follow most of the paper. Now, in terms of the raw difficulty of the maths, it didn't feel so different from just reading my lecture notes at university. But the big difference was that there are always lots of references elsewhere, and also references to standard methods in the field. So it seems like when you read lots of papers, you're having to make a choice between spending more time to explore the references, but these references themselves contain references and so on, or you just have to accept things on trust. And this is a little uncomfortable as an undergraduate because it's drilled into you to really question the material. But I'm under no delusion. I chose the shortest, most simple paper I could find. So it's time to hear from people that are dedicating their lives to this process, all with the same goal of one day making a contribution. We welcome Age of Physics, a third year PhD student in shape theory and wild topology. You might recognize them from the lecture that they gave in our Discord server. And now you get to put a face to the name. So starting off, I wonder if you can give some insight into the impression that I got when I read that little paper about references, referencing references, and things just quickly getting out of hand. There are times when papers reference each other so many times it's kind of hard to get a full understanding of the whole area. If you're lucky enough, some fields of math will have every like 30 years somebody will write down a standard textbook for that subfield of math. And so usually that's like a, that's the thing that everybody uses to standardize their stuff. So for example, in shape theory, there's a textbook by Siegel Mardizic. And so that's like the Bible of shape theory. So everybody reads that book or knows the terminology in that book and helped invent that terminology. And so all the papers are kind of culminated into this textbook. And so I'm very lucky in that case where I can read this textbook and understand what's going on in a lot of the field. So it does sometimes feel like it's endless, but usually you can get through by picking out the pieces that you need. And how much reading did you have to do before you felt well acquainted with your area? It took me roughly two months, I'd say, to become well read enough to actually do anything. Of course, it's gonna vary depending on fields. Like some fields, there's so much history to the field that you have to read a lot more. But uh, while topology and shape theory is kind of new, it's only like 20, 30 years old. And so it took me two months of reading papers to actually catch up. I would say it was about two or three papers. It was quite a bit of reading and messing around too. So it's not just reading that you have to do, you have to mess around with the problems a lot of the time. And how hard has it been compared to what you were expecting beforehand? And ultimately, are you enjoying it? Uh, I'd say it's been a lot harder than I've expected. The amount of work that goes into a PhD is really just insane. Uh, I spend hours and hours working on problems all day and it's fun, like it's what I love, but it really is only for people who truly love the field. And so uh, I would say doing research was a lot harder than I expected. I expected to go in and do research and be like, throw out a few theorems and be like a superhero, but no, it's really, really hard work and you're stumbling around a lot of the time and you, it's hard to find good footing during your research and classwork. Some classes I've actually found quite a bit easier than I've expected. I've excelled quite a bit in a lot of the classwork, but the amount of work that goes into excelling in these classes really is monumental. It's a 
very tough field and very rewarding at the same time. Now, if you're watching, I want your input because there's something that's troubling me and I'm not too sure what to think, but a while ago I stumbled across an interview with a mathematician. Kevin Buzzard. Essentially, he says that after a break of about 10 years, he came back to number theory and he describes how there's been this revolution. And he says that he was struggling to fill in the details left out by some of these papers. And after beating around the bush, not to look arrogant, he says that he thinks they might be wrong, but I don't know, it could be cope. So if you're familiar with the Piatic Langlands program, then I really want to know what your response to this is. <laughs> The impression that Age of Physics has left on me is that you have to be prepared to work hard, but if you love it, then what a privilege it is to get paid to read other people's ideas and to try and create your own ones.